My name is Anthony Burris, and I am enrolled as a PhD student in the Native American Studies graduate program at University of California, Davis. I was born and raised in Sacramento and have lived most of my life in the greater Sacramento area. I am an enrolled member of Ione Band of Miwok Indians. My family is from the 40 acres outside of Ione, California, that although not actually trust land, some refer to as the Ione Res. This is where I spent much of my childhood. Both of my grandparents were very active in the Miwok community, with my grandfather functioning as a leader and my grandmother as a culture bearer. From early childhood, I have been aware of the deficiencies in the way California state history, as it relates to California Indians, is presented. Indians have been largely invisible in the official accounting of California's evolution from Spanish colony to becoming the 31st state admitted to the Union and subsequently a magnet for fortune-seeking settlers. Past historical interpretations have framed men like John Sutter as honored and revered founders, with little to no mention of their grave misdeeds. Events like the California Gold Rush are commemorated by grand celebrations, with no mention of the cost in Native lives, lands, cultures, and communities. Like many tribal members, it is my ambition to address grossly inadequate interpretations of history in a manner that represents Indigenous viewpoints. Addressing this history is a continuation of our survivance. I want our stories told. My work with state parks is an important starting point for addressing these inadequate narratives of our state's history as it relates to California Native nations. Entities affected by this project include the state of California, the California public, and tribal nations in the greater Sacramento region. These nations include Ion Band of Miwok Indians, Wilton Rancheria, Wilton Historic Families, Jackson Rancheria, Buena Vista Rancheria, El Dorado Miwok, Shingle Springs Band of Miwok Indians, United Auburn Indian Community, Wapunne Nissan Miwok Tribe, Yochidihe Winton Nation, and the Washoe Tribe. Two events reshaped this project from the original scope of tribal consultation for changes at Marshall Gold Discovery Park. First, COVID-19 meant we were unable to do an in-person consultation and trips to the parks were confined to just a few occasions. Second was the Black Lives Matter movement and the subsequent national conversation about monument removal. As spring transitioned to summer in 2020, monuments to white supremacy were removed throughout the country. This included the John Sutter statue that sat for decades across the street from Sutter's Fort. This prompted state parks to include Sutter's Fort as part of this project. The Tribal Affairs Division at state parks also shifted focus from consultation to planning as the scope of this project grew. My focus as a public scholar shifted from possible consulting with tribes to working on a national endowment for the humanities planning grant while offering my own recommendations for changes at these parks. While the changes ultimately will be driven by the tribes themselves, my recommendations are as follows. Audio presentations at Sutter's Fort have been identified as problematic. They romanticize John Sutter in a way that is historically inaccurate and ignore his mistreatment of Miwok and Nisenon people. These recordings have been discontinued as of summer of 2020. There should be more comprehensive explanation of Native labor at the fort and elsewhere. Native people were cut off from resources which compelled them to work in settler industries. At times, Indian labor, labor took the form of slavery. There should be a discussion of John Sutter's human trafficking at Sutter's Fort. There should be a more comprehensive discussion of the Native villages in proximity to the fort. This would be beneficial in humanizing California Indians. The idea of Indians as outlaws is promoted at the fort. More context is needed for why Indians resorted to raiding livestock or other activities that were viewed as criminal by the invading settlers. Language used at the fort places native people in a context of a multicultural society that benefited from the fort. This is problematic. Indian lands were invaded and any cooperative behavior on the part of Indian groups must be viewed in this context. Longer term solutions include updating the audio to reflect indigenous viewpoints and history. Another solution offered is to create interactive experiences that utilize GIS storytelling technology. Walking tours of the fort and surrounding area that focus on indigenous viewpoints have been suggested. Update the curriculum for visiting school groups to reflect the solemn nature of the fort. Areas for improvement at Marshall Gold Discovery State Park include the following. Educational materials should include discussion on the ways in which native people tended the land. Currently, Nisanan and Miwok people are presented as having had little contact with the outside world, which emphasizes a colonial viewpoint. Discuss native trade networks, intermarriage, and the fact that native people are often multilingual. Native labor is only briefly mentioned. Discuss the connection to Sutter's Ford and that this labor was often compulsory, both through physical coercion and because native resources were diminished through settler activities. 
Discussion of Native people throughout the park is at times intermingled with the discussions of other communities to reflect the colonial viewpoint that Native people were part of a greater diversity at these sites. Native people should have their own displays in these instances to emphasize the uniqueness of the Native American experience. Native structures should have signage that gives Native language names and explanations. Repair work should be done on the granaries and other Native structures. Origin stories could be incorporated if deemed appropriate by tribes. History of tribal land stewardship should be included. Include Nisanan and Miwok place names for the surrounding geography. Include a discussion of naming, including the fact that everything was already named by Native people before the arrival of settlers. The gold rush is glorified in an extravagant manner in the museum. The story told at the park is imbalanced. The glory of the gold rush far outweighs the apocalyptic nature of the event for Native Americans. More space should be added for the Native American experience. The Native American viewpoint should be given more privilege in this museum. The significance of Native Americans as indigenous people is lost as just one story of the diverse people involved with the gold rush. There is inadequate discussion of Native American genocide. The invasion of Native American lands is framed as a clash of cultures. Indians are blamed for their inability to exist in their homelands because they murdered settlers. This discussion should focus on state-sponsored genocide and include information on the $5 million paid by the state entities by the federal government for the murder of Native Americans. This should also include a discussion of Native American slavery legalized through an act for the government and protection of Indians. In the fall of 2020, inspired by my work as a Mellon Public Scholar, I sought the nomination by my tribe to the California Truth and Healing Council. The California Truth and Healing Council bears witness to, records, examines existing documentation of, and receives California Native American narratives regarding the historical relationship between the state of California and California Native Americans in order to clarify the historical record of such relationship in the spirit of truth and healing. The council will also examine restorative justice mechanisms to address its grave misdeeds towards tribal communities. I was invited to sit on the council as a voting member and have accepted the invitation with the hope of helping to enact real change for tribal communities. I'll leave you with these final words, an excerpt from something I wrote when the John Sutter statue was removed in Sacramento. Survivance has been our story since our areas were invaded by Europeans. We lost our lands and homes, resources and lives. Our graves looted, our children stolen, our labor exploited. Our dignity has been denied by the greater society. I have read many comments over the past day about people being too easily offended. This isn't about being offended. This is about trauma and trauma is real. This is also about our existence because honoring men like Sutter is a denial of our existence. So society should look at our communities and say, yes, you exist and you have value and you are important. That is what removing these monuments does. Some people are saying this is an erasure of history. These statues are not about history. They are huge metal and stone monuments to the myth of white superiority. This isn't just about history. This is about making this city and this society hospitable or even welcoming for our native citizens and our native youth. That's funny, isn't it? Saying we need to be welcomed on our own lands. Or maybe that's not so funny. <laughs>